What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can read from the file system using Elixir. So in the last video we looked at how we could write to the file system and we made use of the functions that come with Erlang. So as a reminder if you haven't or if you haven't seen the last video the Elixir programming language is built on top of another programming language and that programming language being Erlang and this was is quite an old programming language like in, in terms of programming languages in general um, as it was developed back in the 1980s and Elixir is kind of like a language that obviously is quite recent but also built on top of Erlang and because of that we have access to many of the functions that are also available in Erlang so we kind of get the best of both worlds when it comes to programming uh, Elixir as you get some functions with Erlang too. So in order to do that, uh, so when we wrote to the file system we used this function called term to binary which is an, an Erlang function and that basically takes our list, in our case our to-do list, and writes it to the file system or writes it to a binary object which can then be stored uh, in the file system in which we do on line 53. So we can like in order to read from the file system there is a like the complete opposite of term to binary where we have another function called binary to term and that takes a binary object an object and converts that into a term so again a term being our list and we can go ahead and try that out so the first thing I want to do is yeah go back into the um, like uh, to your command line and make sure you're inside the project uh, directory so we can go ahead and run the Elixir environment so ie at iex s and then mix and we can let's just first create a to do list so we can say today to dos equals to dos dot create to do's so enter the number of to do's you want to add let's say three uh, enter task eat apples um, read book watch movie and we just get back this list and as we've assigned it to today to do's we can go ahead and use the save function pass the task in and save it to file name of your choice so to do's dot save pass in the to do's that we've created so today to do's and the name I'll just call it tasks and I already have like a tasks function here a task function sorry a tasks file and what that will do is just override it so I'll just call it tasks and hit enter and we get this okay atom telling us that everything went perfectly so yeah, we've gone ahead and saved our to-do list. However, the like we have a save, but we we also want to read it from the file system, uh, as that is definitely a key thing to add if we're having if we have a save function. So let's have a look at the binary to term function that comes with Elixir slash Erlang in this case. What we can do is say, as this just takes in a binary object. We can first go ahead and use the file instead of file.write we can use file.read so file again is a module that comes built in with Elixir and we can say read and then say tasks and we get this tuple here which uh, bring, gives us the, the first element being the OK atom and the second one being our binary object and these three dots just representing just kind of truncate the rest of the digits so yeah that works fine um, we can then actually let's store this in a variable so let's say um, our like data equals file dot read and then tasks and we're only like we only care about this binary object this okay atom it's just more of a message to, to let us know that everything was fine so in order to get that we can say something like status which will like pattern match with the atom the uh, okay atom and then binary which will match with this 
binary object and we can say equals data like so hit enter and now if I do let me just clear it but if I do binary we get our data our binary object now we can use Erlang dot binary to term and just throw in the binary uh, variable and there we have it we have the list that we created just like a couple minutes ago and we can go ahead now and just replicate this in our app so back in the to do's module we can go ahead and start off by writing our function definition and we'll call this read and this will just take in a file name and do like so and again we can use some pattern matching so we can say status but I'll put an underscore here as the okay status is something that we don't like really care about we just want the uh, the data that comes out of file.read and we can say binary equals file.read and then the name of the file like file name and we get this squiggly line here because uh, Elixir is just telling us that this binary variable isn't being used and Elixir has a very hard time with dealing with unused variables so we can now use this binary um, variable and throw that into Erlang dot binary to term and just say binary like so and this will return a list so as you remember like when we did this thing here it just gave us a list so we can literally just leave it at that and this is again this is really clean two lines of code from reading from our file system and we'll get our list so I'm just gonna recompile and now uh, I can do to do's dot read and just specify the name tasks so yep tasks here and we get our list so yeah that's really simple however the issue is that um, we don't have any like error checking here so if I did, were to do to do's dot read task then we just get this ugly error and we want to deal with something like that we don't want this to kind of you know, if, I mean, this isn't like a, a full-blown app, nowhere near that. But uh, in the like real world, you don't want the user to be confronted with this kind of error. So one thing we can do is we can make use of something that we haven't covered yet called case statements. And it's a bit like the if statement in that it deals with conditionals. Uh, so we have this here, like if, like in our complete to-do, if like the item or to-do list item exists within our in our to-do list, then we delete it. Otherwise, we just return this atom. So a case statement is kind of like a cousin to if statements. So in order to write a case statement, what you need to do is first, I'm just gonna like comment this code out. Oops, like that. And we can say case, File dot read, so like we had here, and just a file name, and then do like that. So the case is basically we're we're matching up with this this file dot read, and with file dot read we get this tuple with a status and like the data or another atom. And what I mean by another atom, so if we were to do file dot read, and if I were to pass in tasks like we get the OK atom and our binary object. However, if I were to do, uh, instead of task, if I were to do something like task, then we get this error atom instead of our OK atom and this e no ent atom, which basically means like no entry, um, saying that like no entry was found regarding task. So either way, we get back a tuple with two elements, the first one always being an atom either OK or error. So we want to deal with those two cases. So in the ideal case, if something exists, we'll get an OK atom along with the binary data. So binary is just an arbitrary variable name. We can call it like whatever you want. The point is 
um, we'll get the binary data and we use this arrow like kind of symbol which is um, this dash and this like greater than sign but like my editor kind of just makes it fancy um, but yeah it's just the dash and the greater than sign together and we can say Erlang so as we had before binary to term so this thing here and then pass in binary and this is something that will be returned in the like worst case scenario where we have the error so as stated just now like we either get the OK atom as our first element or the error atom. So in the case of our error atom, and you have to make sure like it's 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 um, the same. So we have to have like this OK atom exactly like OK. You can't put something else like uh, ASDF, for example, because that won't match up with the OK atom. Like that. And we can just put an underscore here, this reason call it reason, whatever you want. But the reason why I, the reason, reason, um, the reason why I put an underscore under this reason variable is because it will match up with this eno ent and we like, we don't really care about that, more so about this error. So if we do get an error, then we can just return a message saying file does not exist and just save that. And that's really it. That's literally how you can go about like dealing with errors when it comes to, well, uh, one way of dealing with errors in our case, errors within the file system. So either existing, uh, then obviously not an error and we just return the list. So we convert the binary data back into a list. Uh, otherwise, like if the file name that we specified does not exist, then uh, we want to deal with that by just returning a string rather than like this kind of ugly error message that we get. Um, I mean, to a programmer, it's definitely useful, but to an end user, it's something that they definitely don't want to see. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of like the replacement for this. Uh, it's, I mean, four lines, but really like the crux of it is basically three um, in that like we read from the file uh, we check from the file system if this file name exists we read it uh, if there's an error thrown then we just return the file does not exist if there is no error and we get a uh, binary object then we uh, can just return we can convert that binary into a term a a aka in our case a list um, and yeah that's that's really it and hopefully this kind of also shows you the usefulness of atoms uh, as atom is again like a basically a it's the value of an atom is the the name itself uh, there's nothing more to it uh, and it helps when it comes to like checking for errors um, which we've done right here so let's go like test it out I think I've been talking for too long just recompile it and we can do to do's dot read and let's th first throw in like a, the wrong file name, so something random. Hit enter, we get the file does not exist. So this thing here, as we matched up with this error atom. So yeah, that's that's nice, but let's see if we can, I'm just gonna clear it. Let's see if we can read from the tasks file. So read tasks. And there we go, we have eat apples, read book, watch movie. And yeah, that's that's essentially it. We can actually try it with a new list. Um, let's go ahead and create a new one, new to do's equals to do's dot create to do's three um, jump up and down run and elixir course. So yeah, we get this list and let's throw, let's save it. So to do's dot save and then our list so new to do's and the name, I'm just going to call it tasks again. Just so like we know, like we don't get this eat apples, read book, watch movie. Um, so I saved it, we get the okay atom and now we can do to do's dot read tasks. 
there we go. We get jump up and down, run and elixir course. So yeah, everything is working smoothly. But that kind of just wraps up how you can go about reading from the file system, kind of looked at the case statement, didn't go into too much depth there, but hopefully it's enough for you to kind of um, go ahead and try other things out with the case statement. Um, but yeah, that's essentially it. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this kind of uh, gave you some insight on how we can go about reading from a file system. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe. I have a Discord channel too, so if you, uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello, then feel free to do that. The link for the Discord channel is in the description. Uh, and yeah, also if you have any recommendations in terms of what you want to see in the future, then yeah, feel free to let me know. I'm open to as many ideas as possible. Um, so yeah, uh, aside from that, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in the next video.